Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to Mecha Knights. I, uh, I'm just loading up here. And then away we go. I, I'm just loading a previous save. In hopes that this will work. Okay, there we go. That's that's okay. That's something else. Oh, hey, Raiden. I why is the I don't remember the hangar looking like this. And why can't I access the hangar? That's weird. Is that just like? Oh, there we go. This is totally different now. Okay, let's try. Let's try some of the other stuff that I'm used to. How you doing, Ryden? Let's try the Aperoth stuff, because I'm used to Aperoth. And we'll do... Squall was okay for, like, mobility and stuff, but... It was... I swear the Antioch was one of the ones with, yeah, coaxial machine guns. Uh, or there's the Misaki, which is pretty good. Hey, Sammy! Yeah, I, I'm awake. I uh, I wanted to make sure that I got my streams done. So, uh, I'm doing so. Oh, no, the Hyacinth was good. AC Verdict, the Rubicon looks different. Yeah. Um, so, I guess I should explain this. Because there's a catch to this, uh, of which some people will, have, will guess at some point. But I, I figure I should mention it in stream anyway. Um, just let me double check this. Just to make sure. Eperoth's normally going to Typhoon. Acacia, not so much. Let's just try Eperoth 2 here. Okay. So the deal with this is, this is a game that I worked on ages ago. And I, I think I can still see bugs here. I worked on the base game for this. I tested... Um, I tested this game out as the lead tester on it ages ago, and I got brought on to do the uh, the testing for the DLC here, but because I had uh, a kid with my wife, just round about when this was getting properly like tested, uh, I ended up just basically bailing and, uh, and dropping out of testing, so um, I didn't actually end up doing too much other than trying to navigate test as to different things that they could focus on that I knew were going to be problems. So I don't have as much investment with this version of Mecha Knights um, or the DLC as I do with the base game, but I do know how this plays out. I do know all the weapons and everything else for it. So um, this is the new update, which essentially brings everything to a whole new level. Um, the easiest way of describing it is it gives you a lot more parts. There are a lot more enemies. There's different difficulty levels now that you can pick yourself. And you can essentially make it feel as though you are that one guy in the middle of an entire battle that's that's actually helping out and trying to uh, to make a difference. It's pretty nuts, but I'll, I'll show you. Um, and... We'll see how it goes. I'm just trying to pick some decent stuff that I know will be okay at the beginning. Um, let's try... Where's the Hayashida? There we go. Um, then... Equipment-wise... Some of this stuff was was a bit funky the last time I used it. We'll, we'll try... Um... Probably generator is going to be good here, and then actually no batteries. Batteries is probably better. I'm just I'm literally just randomly picking these, um, because just like when I was testing this, it was just a case of like I'll just throw anything on and see whether it works. Uh, let's see, emergency cooling, uh, supply. 
energy. I think that's it. Passive modules. Uh, let's do uh, auxiliary cooling, afterburner, auto repair, and battery. And then we'll we'll paint this up, and away we go. Um, Hi, Mooney. I'm watching on PlayStation tonight. It's this classic with bronchitis. Uh, not fun. Worried about my father. He has it too, so I'm listening to you play. Hey, classic. Raiden says there's no way that short was your first time playing on Titanfall. I'll be I'll be legit with you on that. Uh, when it comes to the Titanfall video, that was literally a very old video of like when I was first getting to uh, level fifty on it on Titanfall one when I played it on the Xbox. So yeah, that's not. That's not 100% legit, it's a very old video. What I'm doing is I'm turning a lot of my old videos into shorts. So for people who are not familiar with the older content on the channel, you'll get to see that in shorts that are coming out. As for this now, I just need to make sure that the, uh, the, the controls are right. Just give me a sec. I've got my configuration set up. I actually made the, uh, the key bindings for this game ages ago for Steam. Uh, it's just not got controller support with it due to uh, issues with that. And he, as you can see here, enemies in the field. 350 we're going to have on at one time. This makes everything harder, but it also lets you experience that grand scale of combat. Uh, we're going to be going from Kiev, or at least we should be going from Kiev, but uh, what's happened is there's an issue. So I'm just going to do this. Which gives me everything, and then we can go from there. Because I, I should have started the stream from zero hour here. Um, we've also got a kill counter as well now, which is great. I'm going to be trying to keep an eye on issues that I think are going to crop up. We've also got difficulty here as well. It essentially just means that um, we can change how much damage is dealt to us and how much uh, damage the enemies take before they die. But yeah, it's, it's going to be nuts. Sammy says, Blowfish! Uh, for anyone who's just come in and, and wants more casual streams, like some of the Undertale stuff, and also um, the Spyro stuff, if you remember that, I, I'm going to be doing that soon. It's just I'm trying to catch up on content and also do Immersion Tale at the same time, so it's uh, I look after family, so it's, uh, it's pretty nuts juggling everything. I'm going to be up until like 3 or 4 in the morning tonight, so... Or even further. Or I might just not sleep. Uh, we, we'll see. We'll see. I've got a lot of things to do. Anyway. So the idea is that we're going to be fighting for the Suez Canal. And, um, a lot of the, the missions in the DLC are pretty neat. And, uh, have some new effects and everything else. Uh, we start off here on the, the port... The idea is we've been dropped off here and we've got to break through the, the Reds uh, blockade that's over here. I'm just going to quickly check something. I, I'm actually doing bug testing on stream. The the thing is... The thing is with this, it's like... The way that I'm going into this is like any other player, primarily because of me... Um, you are not testing this as much as the base game. So, I'm going to come at this more from a player's perspective of what's fur and what's not fur than I would normally do. So what we've got to do is break through these two red hives, of which the hives have the ability to constantly spawn in enemies and they can be... Uh, pretty nasty. They've got certain weak points that you can destroy. As you can see, some of the effects have actually been toned down as well so that we can uh, we can have more things on screen. It ends up being ridiculous in some of the later maps where there's just tons and tons and tons of things on screen. And this has changed so much from when I tested it last time. The, there was normally a couple of... Um, a couple of switches that you had to hit before you could get through the blockade at the beginning and the two hives would constantly pound you until you opened them. I think it's going to be the same situation here. The only difference is I can't tell where the heck the, um, the controls are. 
better be packing a whole lot of firepower if you decide to well, go in. Just whenever you, you kill a, a hive down here, you get a ton of enemies spawning in. There we go. As mentioned in the briefing, I'm an intelligence analyst. The thing with, the thing with mechanites is, it's all about energy and mobility. If you have both of them, uh, then you're, you're good. But if you get caught out by enemies, then that's when uh, you tend to have a bad time. Flooded a mech game. Yeah, the thing is, like, when, when the design process was going through for all the AI, uh, especially in the base game where I was uh, messing around with it, I was actually giving the, uh, the dev the, the flood as an example of, of like, uh, a suspenseful intro that would be... Uh, Really good and, and cement the the reds as uh, a credible threat. That's why mission two is so good. Like it's like that that first night mission where you get overrun by reds. That was inspired by it. So good. Here we go. Here's one of the switches now. You can see there's like a a, a little a little sort of uh, cord that goes towards it. We have to destroy those so that we can get through this. Organic material barricade here. And then I think there's another one that's over here, unless... Nope, nope, okay. So they've changed that. Now is where every, everyone else in the squad moves up, so we can push in. Now the thing is, I don't want these torrents to be in nasty positions, because I complained enough about this with the torrents being a bit cheap. So hopefully... Overcharge the signal output. We hope to be able Hopefully to we're good. The, the idea is that once we get inside of uh, this area, there's a lot of different hives and everything, so... The giant things look like a ray. <laughs> Here we go. It's got like little eyeballs all over it and everything else. I'm trying to make sure that I do enough damage here. We could make this totally trivial by carrying two uh, Hyoshinas in one go. I'm trying to use the Tordon as well, because the Tordon is a, uh, a really fun weapon. And immediately I'm overheated. No! This is where it all goes bad now, when you get overheated. And there is one of the... Oh! I was going to say the AI is moving through a wall there, but it isn't. It's a gap in it. We're getting rushed here. We've got stuff up there. But yeah, as you can tell, there are a lot more enemies on screen. With uh, the base game, what would happen is... Because of the way that everything was developed, you would only be able to have 120 enemies on screen at the same time, roughly. Um, with this one, the coding was optimized so that we can get up to 350 on screen. Uh, and that was tested on lower end systems as well. So on like a 970 card, this will run pretty decently. Um, but honestly, on a 950, you don't want to put the enemy over like 250 enemies on screen. So double the, the base game. Oh, like 350 is uh, is pretty crazy on a nine, uh, 970, sorry. Do you know who or what the rake is? I remember uh, my wife telling me ages ago. Oh, crap. The mech is damaged. I need repairs. And we need to call him. Oh, can I just... Can I try and uh, call in here, please? It was that one, I believe. There we go. We're going to call in and get the uh, the support of the chopper here and then lure all these enemies back. Where's the chopper? The transition to, to red paste when destroyed. Some of it is pretty rough, but it's still fun. Oh. There we go. Thing is, it's basically made by uh, one person with a team of uh, volunteers helping test things and give suggestions. So... Ooh. Come on. There we go. I like the, um, the health effect there. I don't remember that on the original. But yeah, a lot of this is designed to have the the AI try and pressure you into being out of energy so that you'll slow down 
And then when you slow down is when the AI will mob the living daylights out of you and melee you and you're dead. That's that, that's the basics for the sandbox. So provided you don't slow down ever, you, you're good. Oop. But sometimes this one mission alone can take you like 20 minutes depending on what loadout you have or even more. Like sometimes if you're just genuinely not prepared, this mission can take upwards of like an hour. Uh, it all depends on your loadout. I can't remember what my loadout first was when I was trying this out and uh, I, I was literally stuck trying to get to the end of the, uh, the level in like the first 40 minutes I think it was and I was just like, oh god. There's an optional objective there, we're not going to go for that. The, uh, the one thing we've also got to avoid is these turrets getting cheap shots at us. You'll notice a lot of them are put out of the way to try and surprise the player. Or round corners or stuff to, to really get you when you least expect it or when you can't react to it, which is kind of nasty. It, it's a way of getting cheap damage on the player when they can't react. There we go. Oh. Jeez, the amount of uh, viscera and gore here at the moment. At least with my uh, my two machine well, machine guns, uh, Gatling guns here were good. Yeah, the the first time I played this this uh, this one mission took me forty odd minutes, up to an hour, uh, primarily just because of the the enemies and loadout. Like, uh, depending on what what loadout you have, this can go really badly. Like, even even with this loadout here at the moment, um, it can go pretty rough. And the thing is, like you saw me before, I uh, I kind of cheated because of me being part of the team. Uh, I had access to the the debug features, so I've actually turned those on so that we can see some of the uh, the fun stuff, and I don't have to try and progress one of my legit saves to uh, to a point where I can stream this for you. So it was just like, I'll just do that straight away so that I can uh, start from uh, the first level on the DLC rather than having to go play the base game again for about an hour or so. But yeah, you can see I'm just getting absolutely hounded here by the uh, the enemies. And my, uh, my radar at the bottom is, is nuts. I made a joke earlier of 100 enemies swarm the player at once. Yeah, from uh, NGB. And now instead we have... Where's the debug? We've been playing for 10 minutes. Uh, enemy count is 163 on screen. That's the, uh, the average at the moment. Oh no, we weren't meant to have mission area limits like that. The whole idea was you disguise things like that so that you don't run into invisible walls because the base game does not have any of that. Because we camouflaged it well enough. Oh. That. It's it's a small issue, but it's like it breaks the immersion if the player knows they're in an area where they can't escape from. And it, uh, it then becomes a, a whole deal of like... Yeah, it, it's kind of a minor issue, but at the same time... It, it's silly. It's silly advertising that it's a play space when you're trying to tell the, the player... Yeah, you're in a... a fight for life to death and you're meant to care about these characters in the situation. Instead it just becomes, oh, I shoot things, it dies. <laughs> oh. Come on. I've never liked the idea of mission limit stuff like that because I prefer it to be camouflaged by scenery or something, so at least it makes sense. That's a giant meatball. Indeed. There's also the uh, the chance of mini bosses spawning here. Um, there's also different raid missions and uh, other abilities that makes this feel a lot more like EDF. Um, you can get things like, for instance, AC-130 gun chips that will circle the entire area and just lay down cover fire and stuff. It's uh, it's pretty nuts. Okay, we can still harass enemies with the. Uh, the Hayashida here, which is an energy-based shotgun which does ridiculous damage. And did in the base game, and it's not really been changed too much, so that's that's not too bad. Let's call in reinforcements there. 
Is the machine gun you're using a dev? De no, none of this stuff is debug. There's all the stuff that I'm using here is legit. I'll I'll tell you when I'm using uh, debug properly. Essentially, all I use debug for is unlocking all the the parts, even though I didn't need to, and unlocking all the levels, of which I only really needed to unlock. Um, I think it was two more, one or two more, because we start from mission 21, and I believe I was up to mission 19 on the uh, the previous save. You'll never guess who came in to say hi, says Sammy. The cat? Yay, kitty! But yeah, I'll, t I'll give you a clear indication of when I'm using debug stuff, just so you know properly, so that you know what to expect if you decide to get this as well. Where's the, um... Oh, I'm there. I'm there looking for the other door. I think he's here. Command, this is Echo 7. I've opened up a path to the last area. Moving to eliminate the hive... So the last area here... Copy, Echo 7 used to be pretty easy if you just went on the right hand side i'm actually wondering whether it's still the same the idea was that you would essentially push all the way up to the other end of this area and uh originally if you do it legit it, it can take forever just because you're being bombarded by multiple different hives and enemies at the same time that can respawn uh and if you're dealing with all of them legit it can be it can be crazy Whereas, if you just play hit and run on the hives and go up the right side of the level here, you actually get a good shot at a few of the uh, the hives without having to push straight down the center, and thus you can kind of do it unchallenged and just hit and run this thing and try and hit its weak points to uh, to get massive damage as if it's the PlayStation 3 launch. Or rather, the PlayStation 3 E3 video all over again. Oh, wait. So if I just, if I go down the. It's not the right hand side. I'm, no, it is. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up here. So what we're doing here is we're trying to cut a path down this side again, primarily just so I can get out of here if I need to reload. Either reloading or getting health, because there's a. Uh, a heliport behind us. But the idea being that we can just... Oh. Provided we don't get... Taken out by enemies that are coming in here. Uh, we can now push up the, the left. Which is a, a little bit more defended because it has turrets here. We can, uh, we can take out the turrets. And then push up on the left and have a little bit more of a, uh, a time destroying these other areas. I'm getting juggled. Oh no, that's not good. Can I just go for that health there, please? Nope, 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 nope. This is what happens when you get chased by a lot of enemies at once. I need to repair the mech. The problem with some of these enemies is they shoot a lot of projectiles, as you can see, which means you get absolutely wrecked. I'm getting shredded at range rather than at close range here now. And here's all the tanks to help me out. Can I just call in a helicopter here? The AI works a little bit better in this DLC, but it's still mainly a, uh, a one-man army kind of thing. <laughs> just The thing is, these, these enemies will keep respawning until you take out the hives. So it, it can be a little bit annoying making headroom and then getting pushed all the way back here because of the way that it works. The long hallway strat. Yeah, it basically is the long hallway strat for this. Oh. Trying to clear up all this fodder here so I can at least push back in again. Because otherwise the AI will kind of just have me trapped here and I won't be able to do anything about it. Uh, can we just grab this stuff please so I have more health? Ooh. Like imagine putting like 300 on enemies on screen and then turning around and being like, oh I've got max difficulty. 
I don't even think it was tested like that. Which is nuts when you think about it. Oh, I'm glad this doesn't have achievements on Steam, otherwise that might be one of them of like, play the game on max difficulty, or uber max difficulty. Wait, can we just... We need to make a dent in this thing, like, right now. There we go. If that one dies, then we can fall back. Oh, jeez. Fall back again? Oh. What's the most enemies the game will allow without breaking? 350, I believe. That's the way we tweaked it. Uh, what essentially happened was it was manually tweaked after we did a series of tests to discover what a, a 970 would be able to take versus uh, something like a 3060 or a 3090 and it was basically the 970 would take up to about 250 roughly before it started lagging like mad um, and then with the 3090 that was when uh, it was like yeah it can take up to about 350 roughly so uh, that's when it was capped oh oh can I just bam there we go I'll be seeing you says X-Ram uh, keep kicking and having fun thank you very much X-Ram thanks for stopping by it's been a pleasure seeing you again Right, we're going to try and make a push for this now, because we've already been at it like 19 minutes. Hopefully I can just like chip away at its health here. We're meant to actually avoid those, uh, those giant red defensive shots if we can, but... Oh, that should be it now. It's just take out the hives and then it should be the very end of the mission, unless I'm wrong. There we go. Also, it now uh, sells you duplicate parts as well, which is fun. Yeah, I need a repair kit. And for some strange reason, there's a bug there where the game keeps playing even though the mission has ended, which is strange. There needs to be a, uh, a fix for that. Because <laughs> you could probably actually die on the, um, on the menu there at the end. But yeah, what we'll do is now is we'll go and have a look in the, the mech hangar and I'll show you exactly like some of the new bits. Like, for instance, some of the new parts are tier 3, and we have access to all of them. So we can see all the uh, the cooler parts, like, for instance, the uh, the crazy head there, which is the swan. Mission failed, killed in the menu, when <laughs> killed. Um, we've got the Stormwolf D, which has more of a samurai-looking head, but that actually doesn't look like it's been painted, so that's a, uh, another issue, that's a bug. Same with this one, some of the parts aren't being painted, which is uh, strange, that should have been picked up on. The, the aggressor here was one of the parts that I uh, I was going to 3D model because for a part, one point in time I offered to 3D model stuff. But um, yeah, it didn't go down so well, so I ended up just like testing instead. I basically did the, um, the art test. Everything went fine and then I just did not have the time to do this much 3D art all in one go, so. As well as do my own projects. So what we'll do is we'll do tier 3 stuff now. We'll do the, um, leader? Actually, no, that's Lancer. There's a lot of, like, different parts that look really kind of weird here together. These are meant to be all kind of spiky, armored core-based stuff, which is cool and everything. Just some of them look very different to what you'd expect in the base game. Is that? Yeah, it's got a, a machine gun on the end of it. The, uh, there was definitely some massive influence by Armored Core in, uh, in the design for some of these parts. There's a Quaxial gun on quite a few things here. I think that's... Yeah, the, there's one, or at least there is one, that had a... Um, and there we go, Quaxial rockets. So the rocket pods that fire automatically. And then we've got different parts here. We've got different arms... Which look really cool. Some of which that will look like Gundam for a moment. 
Got these cool, like, giant fins on. I'm not exactly sure what they're meant to do. Those ones look pretty cool, though. Let's go with the, uh... The giant fins, as it were. I, th I think I prefer those ones on maybe, maybe the base ones with the uh, the arms on. Bottoms, I've not seen these, so let's let's have a look. That that one looks pretty cool. Bastion. I'm gonna go with that one because the armor design. Like a lot of this isn't really sort of affected by stats and whatever, so. Yeah, let's see. These so look like armored core legs. Like base armored core. Then we got like very rounded design armor there. And then we got the Mistrals, of which I think. Think for this, I might pick the Mistral stuff. For weapons, um, we've got some new assault rifles, which are pretty cool. We got some auto cannons. Uh, we got a flamethrower. At some point, we got some new Gatlings, which I don't think they do as well as the. Um, the other stuff, I can't remember. Yeah, the fire rate is toned down by a little bit. And the, the ammo is effectively toned down. Um, we got some grenade launchers with napalm stuff. And we've got some burst lasers, which are, are really fun. Plus uh, a couple of other interesting features as we, we keep going down here, including um, some other versions of the uh, the railgun from the base game. And then the, uh, the rocket pods over here, which were... Pretty, pretty crazy. And by crazy, I mean, like, totally broken. So hopefully, hopefully we can get around to that. But what I'm going to do here is, instead, I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to pick the, uh, I think either the Carnaday or the, the Arzani. I think I might pick the Arzani. Do we all those? For the time being. Let's see. Arzani. It's either that. Or the, uh, the Carnaday. Because of the uh, the ammo, but the damage is dropped by like 300. So actually, it's a tier 3 weapon, but it's not really worth it. Um, as for shoulder weapons, uh, let's see. We got a load of like mortars and other things. What is this game? This is Mecha Knight's Nightmare. Any melee? No. Uh, the choice was made to leave melee out really early on. If I remember rightly, the the Argos is good and also where is it? How has it changed? I'm trying to see if it's been changed early on. There was like a um Yeah, it's gotta be the Argos. So the Argos, when I played this last, was really good for when you first start out. You can just use these and you'll be you'll be fine. Um Equipment wise, I don't remember. There was like sentry turrets with rocket pods, mine layers. The APS is a cool new thing that I'll I'll show you. The APS is basically uh, a missile interception system that was designed specifically for the um, the DLC, and it shoots down enemy projectiles, but it takes away your energy. The idea being that. Um, it's supposed to kind of cripple you a little bit to uh, to make you play a little bit differently. Um, let's see here. Then we've got different things here, like the, the Osprey, which is more offensive. Ghost Rider, which is uh, like an Earth Strike. We've got Thermobaric Bombs. We've got the Earth Strikes. There is an AC-150, I think, in here somewhere. I think that was supposed to be it. Oh, there we go, AC-130. Right, so if I do... Um, Ghost Rider. Uh, let's do Air Strikes. Tomahawk Missiles. Offspray. And we'll do... Thermobaric. Then, yeah, we should be good there. And then we'll just go Campaign. Mission 22, which is the highway, and away we go. Is this PC only? Yes. This is PC only. And probably will stay PC only. Yeah, 
Here we go. So on this, we're essentially making our way across the highway to a, uh, a point further up the map. We have to escort the tanks, make sure we don't get killed, and uh, push through, as it were. God damn it! It's a long way to the radar station, and we're meeting resistance already. These bastards aren't going to let us slip by easily. Echo 7, we need you to punch a hole through the horde for the convoy. There's no other way. The APS should activate automatically here. There we go. You can see the APS shooting out red lasers, which shoot down projectiles. Don't get pincered between the two swarms. Solid copy. Hang back for now, Major. I'll clear a path. Mia, Cheryl, protect the convoy at all costs. Understood. All right, Warren. I think I need to ask a question that's oh. on everyone's mind. What's the Delphi radar exactly? Why is it so crucial? And how's this plan gonna work? The Delphi radar was Ooh, come on out. <laughs> trying to uh, anti-ballistic system. Or trying to punch a hole through the forces here because they're gonna constantly throw enemies at us ourselves and our allies against the coalition's missile threat, right? Exactly. I was stationed at the Delphi facility before the conflict, but evac when the area got overwhelmed. Lucky they pulled you out in time, huh? Indeed. Our the uh, the rocket tosser is actually really nice here. I'm really enjoying it. And I really love the... Um, and you can manage the entire installation and I really love the way that I'm by yourself. able to use the, uh, the radar's network. Hopefully the system is still intact. DL four ATAs still because they're really good Have considering they, they drop the a little bit more frequently than some of the other weapons from what I know. Fire of shit. And we're right in the middle of it without a battle. The idea might sound far fetched, but we're running out of options. And if it's any consolation, we do have data that supports the theory. Okay, so we're so gonna try to take out this hive here. Does that answer your concerns? The reason why is because if we take out the hive, then we don't have any spawning enemies to deal with. Be advised, the main swarm is approaching the Suez Canal as we speak. Should Warren's plan work and attract the swarms within the region? Just all this core. Ballistic missiles containing BX nerve gas. For your own safety. You will need to be at least 20 kilometers from the right, let's when those missiles impact. Call in the uh clicks. Understood command. Oh boy! Let's call in the uh, the extra stuff. This keeps getting better and better as usual. Oh wait, I don't think I can because of Oh no wait. To deliver fire supporting your position. We do have uh for bomb drop. Commencing bomb drops. So you'll be able to see airstrikes coming in now on my position. There we go. <laughs> There we go, we got um, Ghost Rider flying around in the, the distance there, giving support, and there's um, the bomber as well. Which is pretty cool. Oh. What I'm trying to do is hold the middle for the, uh, the AI here. And hopefully take out this red hive here. There we go, it's down. We need to wait here for the rest of the convoy. We won't be able to refuel without our tankers. Understood. Echo 7, this is command. This is where the uh, the convoy gets ambushed by a bunch of uh, kamikaze style enemies. If you let them get close. So we're gonna have to size of those fucking things. Echo have to take them out at long range. Keep them off us at all costs. I'm on it. Mia, Thing is, they do have a weak point control. right on the front of the models. So it's not too bad for their explosion radius is massive. Let's try. Solid copy. Let's try. Uh, let's try giving me a support everywhere. I think I may have just. Dropped a bomb like nowhere near me there, but we'll we'll see. You can see the explosion radius of the uh, the AI at the moment, which is nuts. Oh, and then we've got the newer type of enemies, the uh, EMP, the uh, the player. If you stay within that EMP field, it messes you up and uh, takes away a lot of your energy. I 
remember whether there was other enemies over the other side or not. I think there was eventually. I'm just trying to avoid these uh, exploding types at the moment, or bomb types. Oh, and then there's the shield types as well. They're pretty crazy, but if you just aim at the legs, they go down so fast. Or if you've got the, uh, the cannons here like me, you can just decimate everything. I hope everyone's enjoying so far, by the way. from this planet. Third round is on me if we wipe them out. Is there like a rule of nature or something with an echo team that I'm not familiar with? Is the universe just content to shit on us all the time at this point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the echo team rule. I like it. Let's go with that. Now, I expected enemies to come from the other side here, but apparently not. Not yet, at least. We're just kind of stood around doing nothing, which is... boring. <laughs> Anything? I have fun just trying to organize my scrapbooks as Sammy. <laughs> oh, that's going well. Yeah, we're just kind of sat here waiting for enemies to appear or something? Enemy bomb types approaching from the east. Oh, the way we just sat here with the tanks for ages with seemingly, like, no reason for that. I ran out of tapes to sell me. Oh, no! Oh, and... Um, wait, what? Why is there a mission error? Mission limit thing there. Why is there an enemy stuck behind a wall? That is not good. Enemy type there, I think. Not entirely sure. There's the EMP type. Oh, come on now. Oh, uh, they just EMP'd me to the point where I actually don't have any energy anymore. That's not good, especially around the explosive types. So let's just make sure I take them out. Especially from longer range. Okay. We're not doing too bad so far. I would have liked it if the enemies would have come from the other side as well and made it a little bit more interesting rather than just one side at a time because it makes it a little bit boring. I'm just kind of just shooting in the same direction whenever an enemy shows up and that's about it. And there's no um, enemy types like the mortar types that you see in the base game. There's none of them in here because that would be... Uh, fun, but I think it might be because they don't want to make it too hard? I don't know. 
Oh no, it's like we're missing certain enemy types and they're being replaced with others. Solid copy. Air support incoming. They just like Ghost Rider inbound. Preparing to deliver fire support at your position. Let's get out of the area there for the moment. There you go, there's the Osprey. There's the uh, the AC-130 flying around in the background. I think we should get a bomb drop in a little bit. Yeah, there we go, there's the bomb drop. All those explosion effects. Are they shooting at enemies? from where they spawn there, because it looks like it. They're behind the geometry. Oh, they're hard to tell, so... Enemy bomb type spotted. West side. Get ready, boys. Here they come. Echo 7, this is command. You've got more of the new enemy types moving towards your location from the east. Oh, here we go. I think now is where we get hit from both sides. That's that one there. Try to make sure I stay on top of these ones that come out so that I'm not having problems. Coordinates locked for bomb drop. Can I just like bomb them on the spawn there? That would be pretty broken. There's the bomber. I think the bomber is just gonna wreck everything around that. Yep, there we go. You can, you can see it nuking everything over the. Oh my god. That looks so cool. Oh, I'm getting EMP'd from behind. I gotta like this feeling of being in a, a much larger battlefield compared to the base game. It's so nuts. Is that the last of them? Scans indicate no more enemies in the vicinity. Great job, Echo 7. Thanks for looking out for my strikers, Echo 7. Now, buckle up. It's a long ride to the radar station from here. Okay, so that was the second version. I found more clear tape. Time to celebrate with Freddy Fazbear's lips. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember all the missions in order and what they actually are. Oh, come on now. Gates of Delphi. I think I remember this. Yeah. Okay, so with... With this mission, we're pushing on towards the, the radar base that was mission, uh, mentioned in the previous mission. Um, the problem being that the base is completely overrun. <laughs> so, fun times. I should have brought out some of the newer uh, parts, like the burst cannons, to show you guys, but... We'll try it with this at the moment. Maybe I'll try the burst cannons in the, the indoor mission or whatever. Alright, this is it, boys. The Delphi radar site's coming up. Warren, are you ready for this? Solid copy, Echo 7. I just need access to the radar's network. Ghost Rider inbound. Oh. Preparing to deliver fire support at your position. <laughs> that moment where I accidentally press Ghost Rider. Can I just... Solid copy. Air support incoming. Can I just like bomb everything from there? That'd be great. 
Because I know enemies are coming in from behind me now. Can I just... Coordinates locked for bomb drop. There we go. If I can drop a bomb there, that might take out some of the enemies on the inside of the, uh, the facility. Meanwhile, I'm getting chased by flying enemies here. I love how all of this on screen is just so much more chaotic than, uh, than the first game. There we go, move it up with the tanks now. Oh, now we've got to deal with the mortar type enemies, which I believe are behind the fence. We've got a couple of turrets here. Okay, can I just like get through here. I, I think I just killed something through the fence there. If I get through the uh, the fence, that would be really fun. Shit. Gate is closed. Lauren, can you hack the radar from here? No, I need to access the base's internal network. But I should be able to open the gate. Buy us some time, and I'll hack into the control system. Echo 7. This is command. Satellites are picking up unknown heat signatures in the area around you. Whatever it is, it's headed your way. You've heard the lady. Get ready for contact. I thought I'd be able to get the through the other. What fresh devilry is this? These things keep getting more and more crafty. They're creating more red. Remember Echo Team Romeo? Uh, oh. It can always get worse. Fascinating. These are the mobile variations of the hives we saw. Save your science lessons for later. These things are not here. Just, to there we go. Coordinates locked for bomb drop. Commencing air Just deliberately just drop everything fire on them. Set to deliver fire support to your location. That thing is gonna get Solid absolutely air toasted air in a moment. Build. I've got an AC-130 chipping away at it. It's gonna have a bomb drop on it. And I'm not sure what else. Boom, there we go, it's dead. Anything that was close to it in the vicinity is dead as well, so I can just focus on this one. There we go, because we can circle strafe out the way, we're good. That scan indicates high amounts of enemy forces moving towards your position, Echo 7. Understood. Get ready for battle. We got... Yeah, we've got a... Reload if we need it. If not, we'll just wait for... Uh, the bombing run again and... Ghost Rider. Come on now, if I can just take this thing out, we're good. Sounded one of those guys sounded like Bandit from Bluey. <laughs> My kid loves Bluey. It's it's such a good uh, show. Oop. My uh, my favorite character is Socks. <laughs> Socks followed by Pom Pom. And then Bingo. Oop. Come on, I just need to. Why does it take so long to put a bombing one down on this? Bomb drop. Commencing airstrike. Dude, I have to literally go like right next to it to put a bombing drop on it? What the hell? What's the point in lasing it if I'm right next to it?
thought it should be dead. Ghost Rider approaching. Set to deliver fire support to your location. Okay, there we go. Solid copy. Air support incoming. I like Russian pom pom. <laughs> pom pom's so good. Dude, that backup. We'll just do like a complete carpet bomb on the enemy. Oh, and there is another one. A small but hearty breeze. <laughs> Everything's fine until you want to uh, go get ice cream. The is open. Finally. And then somebody ends up playing ragdoll. Damn, the base is infested with reds. We Ooh, need to crap. clear the area so we can fortify the position. I'm in. I'll access the radar control system. Roger that. All units, stand your ground. So here's where we start getting nasty placements for torrents. Because they're just all placed at the center here. So it's a case of like what you want to do, and in most cases the best option is just a laser target from distance. If we can. Oh, laser that? Coordinates locked for bomb drop. Yep. Okay, so the bomb drop there will help loads. What game is this? This is Mecha Knight's Nightmare Eclipse. This is a, uh, a mech game for PC. Did you know Sans is featured in Blade? Wait, what? I did not know that. I, uh, I, I need to know, Sammy. Like, what's, what's the deal? You've got me interested there. I, I did not know about this at all. Oh, crap. Thanks for telling Sissy Clubs. That's fine. He's a plushie in the background. Oh, oh my god. Yes, I need to put a bluey book in, in uh, Immersion Tale now as a reference. Dude, that's totally awesome. Thank you for telling me that. I'm actually wondering whether I can feature, you know, like one of the episodes where it's Bluey and Bingo just reading a load of books. I'm wondering whether I can just like make references to those books as well. Just in like Papyrus and Sans House, because I still need to actually make those. Yes, you're welcome. See, I love all kinds of stuff like that. I really do. It's all the little details that they're really cool. That's it. All enemy hives neutralized. There we go. Although the way there's that very squelchy sound at the end as something gets destroyed there. Okay, so I'm just gonna check. Uh, do we have? That was Gates of Delphi. We're in Overcharge next. I just need to show Ethan's diary. I'm just double checking to make sure. Overcharge. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay, so those are all changed. <laughs> That's fine. Um, mech hanger. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change some of the parts around. I thought it was funny because I'm sat there in the episode and be like, No, leave me alone, Sans. Why are you following me? <laughs> Napalm grenades. Nope, 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 nope. Let's do three here. For this, I'm going to deliberately pick... Wait, there's a Davis? Davis 2? Volta. Superior ballistic weapon. Okay. What about... Oh no. Rapid fire railgun. And then we've got the zoo rocket launcher. The zoo is, uh. Or is supposed to be really broken. So I guess we'll use it. And then. Oh, I remembered. I was going to show you. 
uh, the either the sunstorm or the sewer. Yeah, I was it. Yeah, there's the widespread and then fires multiple laser beams at cores. Try to remember which one it was. I think it was the Suyo was the one that's like a shotgun. Or the Sunstorm, because the Sun... Might be the Sunstorm that's a single. Why wouldn't you buy a railgun? It's... The railgun in the base game was broken. As in, like, it was so good, you could make the entire game not fun by using it. It's supposed to be kind of like a horror game mixed with a, a shoot 'em up And it, it broke... A lot of the encounters because it didn't make them scary anymore and uh, yeah just making that rapid fire just seems a bit silly let's see oh we got the Ragnarok as well <laughs> I, I did not know we had the Ragnarok unlocked five shotgun slugs oh automated shotgun slugs Interesting. Grad fires multiple rocket launchers. Let's just for the giggles, I'm gonna take the Ragnarok, which is a super weapon. I'm gonna keep that handy and we'll we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna try not using it, but if if I get pushed too much, then I'll use it. I thought that was funny. The question was rhetorical, but now I'm glad I know. <laughs> I, I'm just... I, I'm giving all the juicy details. Oh, let's, let's just push the wire to the side there for a moment. I need to also find out the time. So, we should be underground here. Oh, just give me a sec. Just trying to find out the time. Yeah, okay. So, we're underground. The place, the base is infested. Three major generators that need to be activated if we're to restore power. To I forgot I've got bombing runs and stuff, and I don't need them. Yes. Once your mech is close enough, I will tap into each of the generators' local networks and initiate the power up sequence. At that point, we can do the same. We got the starfire here, which is supposed to be broken as well. Oh, come on now. We're just mowing down enemies here like it's nothing. Does the the Starfire doesn't actually have an overheat? It just has a beam, a constant beam. Uh, wrong way. Wrong way, Dave. Some of this stuff I never actually bothered to. Uh, to mess around with before, so being able to uh, actually play around with it is pretty interesting. This hallway is not because it's one long hallway with a bunch of turrets in. It's a case of having to keep pushing forward and surviving the the hordes while also not being hit from behind either by the uh, the enemies that are spawning in behind you. I feel like the these levels particularly fans really enjoy just because the atmosphere because the atmosphere is very thick and claustrophobic it, it, it's nuts and it's full of enemies that can seemingly come out of the woodwork and kill you the funny thing about this is if you go fast enough they actually get locked out of the next area so that you don't have to deal with them as much some of these uh, bits of biomass actually spawn other enemies which is crazy now th this bit here I think it's either this but the next but you can actually spawn camp the uh, the AI you don't actually need to go in the room <laughs> like for instance here we're supposed to clear out this room and you can do it a couple of different ways but the easiest way of doing this oh is by not going in the room and just engaging stuff at range and just sniping them. Oh. That's totally 
different that. Oh. Do do do. Making this look easy. This is another mission where it can take quite a long time, depending on one, your loadout, and the fact that, two, it throws a ton of enemies at you. They just seemingly keep coming until you clear the rooms. Optional objective! Coming out of the goddamn walls. You need help? <laughs> Coming out of the goddamn walls! I'm trying to remember. Yeah, ah, uh, okay, so this is. This is another area where you can snipe from into the objective. Oop. It's trying. Let's make sure I get this right. Come on now. We have to push up here because of the stuff that's behind me spawning in. Okay, there we go. I think it might actually be deliberately trying to force me in here into an awkward situation because it used to be that you could just sit at the doorway and just take out the hive from in here, but now it looks like I'm going to have to try and push my way through. There we go. Take out the hive. There it is. This vessel launcher is uh, is interesting. What I'm trying to do here is just clean this area up a little bit because it's uh, it's busy. Is the best way of pouring it, but Ooh. okay. Best thing about this though is you can bottleneck enemies in areas like this. Because we were already getting chased by them, why not just put them in an area where they can only come at you? From one direction. Oh, hey, Revenge! Nice to see you. Oh, I just realized the rocket pod you can indefinitely spam with because it has no overheat. Which is potentially what makes it so broken! Come on now. Okay, we're in. We're going to download stuff from the servers. Thing is, if we go in here, we're going to get mobbed like mad. So what I might do instead is set everything off and then back down the corridor. I just bottleneck everything. All of the way there's a health pack in the corner behind the turret just to be extra nasty. You know. You want this? You want this? Well, uh, damaged. Th this rocket, man. Why would you run any other rocket launcher? It's... When it's this good, 
that it's stopping enemies in its tracks. Why why would you use anything else other than this? Florian, enough with this suspense. In fact I'd argue that I want another one. Please don't tell me we came all this way for nothing. So far, so good. I see only minor damage to the power grid. I was getting nervous there for a while. Like I'd love another one of those on the shoulders or something. Understood. Moving to the next terminal now. Shoulder mounted Zurong. When are we gonna get that? <laughs> I was playing as I listened to you on my phone. I was doing defense in Helldivers too, it's hard to do. My team was so lost, drop a nuke to finish it. I'm done. My cold making me dizzy, I'ma watch you now, this is classic. Hope you're alright, classic. You know, just take it easy and rest up. Yeah. Oh my god, there's a hole in the roof though, you can see outside the level. Just stay close to the turret. Take care of the rest. Oh. That moment, I'm torn to pieces here, so I'll just. Warren, do your thing. I'm on it. Right, can I just remember oh. to stay close to the terminal so you don't sever my connection? Okay. If I can bottleneck them over there, we're good. Or at least somewhat bottleneck them. I don't believe there's a hole in the roof back there. I mean, then, I've been doing good, to be honest. I can't wait to do more Spyro streams and stuff, you know, like I did ages ago. Uh, I've been working on Immersion Tale again. That's going really well. Um, doing some new collaborations with some uh, avatar Except creators to try and line. get more characters Great for the job. underground. To the next terminal. Uh, I'm not going to spoil that too much because uh, I figure I can do it as a separate video update. But yeah, it's it's been fun. I know I've not been showing off too much at the moment, but that's only because it's all kind of like behind the scenes for the time being. It'll be good when I get back to proper 3D stuff again. Also, I almost finished up writing up the uh, the script for um, Frisk Slides. Is there another hole in the roof there? No? Okay. Did I already come this way? Was it that way I needed to go? Oh, uh, apparently I did not come this way. Otherwise there would be uh, no surprises here. Oh, before anyone tries to guess the, uh, the cameo characters for Immersion Tale, it's not Gaster. <laughs> Gaster's totally not a thing. Okay, let's get in here. I've reached the second terminal. Warren, you're up. On it. Don't move away from the terminal until I've attached the power node. For times. This is one area that I got stuck on when I first played this. It was just the simple fact that this node set up here is so nasty. But you can't just go back to it like this, so it's not too bad. It just, when there's a lot of enemies on here, it can, it can get bad. That's it. The power grid is on. I'm starting the overcharge sequence. Good. Just be quick about it. We don't have much time. It's not instantaneous. The whole system needs to cycle and gradually... Ooh, come on there. 
This thing hasn't been powered up in a while. Are you really sure this will work? You're not sounding quite so cocky. If not, we'll have to find another plan. Let's but go back way, to the uh we'll probably get back up here. Roger that. Go back to the spawn. Oh, there's some see-through mesh that should not be see-through. Oh, that is not good. <laughs> Love that. You just see small things like that. It's like, oh, oops. Warren, get on the feed now. I can't find anything like it in the database. Just watch out. The residue is moving on its own. Looks like it's turning into something else. Dun -dun -dun. I can see. I'm recording it all. Warren, did you just close the door? Wait, no. Red tissue is sealing the gates. Oh, remarkable. Truly remarkable. This might be the first time that we've seen the Reds plan and execute an ambush. This is proof of forward thinking. And sentience. This is evidence oh, come on that now. might not be acting purely on instinct alone. This boss is really I'm interesting, but it, like as long as you can circle straight at you fine. Hang on. I'm coming to help. No. Stay there and protect the entrance. I will handle this on my own. I don't know if the Reds have planned anything else. Looks like you don't have a choice, son. Lock and load. All barrels. Come yeah, on. Almost got it. Down. There we go. It's dead. And then for the sake of it, we'll use the Ragnarok for cleanup. Anyone else getting the interference? And then we get static interference and then the mission ends. Task Force Ascalon, this is Command. We read the radar overcharge. Its current effect on the Reds is unknown. However, you are advised to clear the area ASAP. VX nerve gas missiles are standing by, ready to strike the installation on my command. Understood, Command. Echo team's rolling out. <laughs> I'm gonna take... Get some rest. Take care, Moody. I can see you're on the tail stream. <laughs> Thank you very much, Classic. I want to play. Uh, I want to play Team Swap. That's gonna be fun. I might get that. I might ask somebody from the uh, the community where to get Team Swap so I can play that next. That'd be really fun. Considering more on the tail content. <laughs> Right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna rock double zoo wrong here. And uh we'll go That was overcharge. Red storm is uh, one that's in kind of like a uh, a desert area. There's gonna be low visibility, it's pretty cool though. Oh, ho, ho, ho. What, All units. what happened to the frame rate there? The frame rate all of a sudden just like jumped down to uh, 40 odd frames per second. Looks like your plan worked, Ward. It did indeed. Allied troops at the Suez Canal are reporting a massive retreat of enemy forces. They are all heading your way. Brace yourselves. This place is going to be a shooting gallery. Okay, here we go. Be advised. A heavy sandstorm is converging on your position. Visibility will be severely impacted. Oh, perfect! I hate being able to see what I'm shooting at anyway! <laughs> That's not all. The higher-ups have decided we can't wait anymore. We don't know how long the Reds will remain oh. in the area. Ballistic missiles containing Trying to gas are inbound take as many of these out as I can I while this briefing is going on. Make your way to the port in Eilat ASAP. <laughs> Guess the sand is going to be the least of our concerns, huh? Come on there. Does that mean that if I kill anything beyond that barrier, I can't pick it up? 
That would be totally crazy if I could, like, kill something beyond the barrier and can't pick it up. It would just break so much. And that's that guy did. And here's the desert storm. I really love how the desert storm looks here. It's so cool. I can see it like gradually coming in and everything. Oh, there we go. It's rolled in and made visibility terrible, like they said. Hey, maybe if I can call in the offspring there? Let's try it. Ghost Rider approaching. Set to deliver fire support to your location. You've got another wave incoming, Echo Team. Watch out. There are carrier types among them. Let's dispatch them. Quickly. Join the Fed Corps. The adventure of a lifeline. Modern day nights, they said. <laughs> We're just chewing through this uh, mobile fortresses armor here. Okay. Oh, I watch! I didn't get blindsided by that then. Another new enemy. What it is, is it fires uh, waves of energy that you have to avoid unless you want to take damage, which I don't think anybody does. I'm trying to get rid of some of these turrets, or all of the turrets on the... Uh, Stationary position is a bit weird. Ooh. That moment where I'm trying to uh, find out what's going on in the next minute. Nope. Protect the cov. <laughs> oh no. No one near him. I'll just have to get back to it and avoid those waves of energy as best as I can. Make sure that they stay there for the moment. I like the way that the missile turret torso seems to work at the moment. Ooh. Personally, one of my favourite ones. What is that? I swear I put. Ah, oh, there we go. I'm putting that down at the nearest place. 
It should be right in front of us. There we go. There's all the uh, the other stuff, and then we can push forwards here. Because we're going to have to uh, rescue Team A and B. Oh wow, look at that grouping there. It's almost as if they knew you were going to come around the corner and just decided, you know what, we'll just stick all of our torrents on that one corner. This guy, how you doing? Okay, let's get rid of these turrets. So that we can then rescue these guys. Thanks, Echo 7. They nearly got us. Doing alright. Ah! Same. Admittedly, it's hard kind of streaming at almost 4 a.m. In fact, I think it is 4 a.m., but eh, it's whatever. With that, I'm finding a bunch of little bugs. That time of year, <laughs> yeah. The worst part is I actually still need to do a load of stuff. I need to do like dishes and everything before I can go to sleep, so what the times. This guy says, well I'm in trouble. Wait, what? It honestly looked like it could get through that for a moment. AC6 model kits everyone. Oh yeah, I've seen the AC6 model kits. They look uh, they look interesting. I promise I would never buy another model kit before made one or two, so this guy. <laughs> I'm gonna go now, so bye Dave and everybody else's revenge. Thank you very much, revenge. I'll see you on the next one. These turrets, man. Cheap damage. Like, the, the box in such a way, or designed in such a way, that they know where you're going to be before you even do, especially on, like, first playthrough. You're walking along next to me, you get hit by, like, four or five turrets. It's like, oh, okay, I've been caught off guard. Let's do that. And then... If I can't... Yeah, I do. Ghost Rider inbound. Preparing to deliver what do you make of the whole game in general? What, Mecha Knights? Thank God you came for us. Head back to the line. I'll cover your retreat. Like the base game or the DLC? I want to hear your thoughts. Okay, so... So, my thoughts are going to be slightly biased because I had a hand in this. Like a major hand in it. Um... So, I'm going to try and come at it without engaging that bias, as it were, because I could turn around and, and give you instances of where I helped with the design and everything, and we focus testing and how well it's done and stuff. But I also think that would be uh, not right to bring up some of the more internal workings in a stream, primarily because it just wouldn't look good. Um... 
But, let's get into the game. The game is interesting. Oh, Sammy says, I'm ahead to bed. Good night, Dave. Take care and say hi to Jen for me. Will do, Sammy. Thank you very much for sticking around. So long as you don't go out and call it. I I didn't just test it. Um, I was the lead tester on the base game. I was supposed to be the lead tester on the DLC, but I ended up having a kid uh, with my wife, basically, when testing began. Um, so I ended up calling quits and just sort of oversaw of things a little bit. Um, so I didn't do as much of a job as on the base game. On the base game, I helped test stuff, I helped design uh, levels, I helped uh, with uh, in designing encounters and how well they should play out and stuff. I have a much bigger role in this than is actually attributed to me. The only thing is, it's like I'm credited as a lead tester just for the sake of it. Um, like, I, I could go into lots of stories behind the scenes about how I actually influenced this game a lot more than just I tested things and broke them. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into that. Um, the game, on its own, is a nice little experiment on horde shooters. And it harkens back to kind of like Serious Sam where you just run around like giant areas and kill lots of things and then go into the next area and do the same. The The difference is that part of the design sandbox is that you, you always have to be on the move. Because it's fun to be chased by enemies while unleashing massive amounts of rounds downrange and feeling like you're in charge and in power. But... The, the dynamic, the, the fun dynamic comes from when the enemy take away that power by slowing you down or you run out of ammo or something. That's when it becomes scary. And the sandbox is deliberately supposed to be built around that, you know, in terms of like, you're always meant to feel like you're just about in control and you can really decimate lots of troops. But at the same time, it's like at any point in time, you could have something go bad or you could just like not watch your... Uh, your ammo or your energy or maybe the enemy could take it away from you and immediately that changes the dynamic up so it becomes a lot scarier because the game was originally quoted as being like a, a, a horror horde shooter uh, taking inspiration from like Armored Core Resident Evil and stuff and the thing is from my own personal opinion I reckon it, I reckon it needs to dive more into the horror side of things because I find that way more interesting. The thing is, it's like... Um, the horror side of things can be done really well with this. And you can tell because in certain missions the atmosphere is built, built up really well. And a lot of the, the fan favorite missions are the horror missions, which I had a big hand in. Uh, which are the ones where you're in like small, cramped environments where it's really dark and stuff. Um... It's like, the idea being that uh, you get to enjoy combat, but you also get to feel scared when the enemy gets you on low health. And then it becomes a running away game with you trying to flee for your life. That's cool. That was, that was one feeling that was nailed really early on and that we wanted to focus on. But I really do think that the game kind of... I wouldn't say it drops the ball a little bit, but it definitely goes more for, like, the open world, sort of, like, open field EDF-style shooter thing, where you're just shooting lots of enemies. And the one thing that I don't like about it is when you're mindlessly shooting enemies. Like, there's there's no... Um, there's no sort of scare to it. Like, my, my whole thing is having it so that... I'm just going to... Um, Change my uh, avatar here because it's leaning slightly off camera. Um, my whole thing is I don't like it when you're mindlessly shooting at enemies because it's not fun. And a lot of the, the base game's weapons were deliberately balanced with that in mind. Like, some of the weapons were just totally broken. Um, and as a result, were toned down heavily so that you couldn't do like this where you just sit at the end of a, uh, a road and just shoot and you instantly win. 
you know, because that's that's not fun. Whereas moving around, man. avoiding shots, avoiding enemies spawning in and having I'll them try. spawn in like behind you or in different seconds. locations, that's fantastic. Like you know, that that gets the player engaged and gets them more excited. I love those style of engagements, and it's really good when it does that. Um, there are instances as well where, because of the way the the AI works, it's it's random in uh, the way that it deploys AI and stuff. So what can end up happening is one part of the engagement can be like really boring, and then another part you can get lucky and it will drop like the best group of AI to to really put you on the back foot, and I I like that, you know because you get a different experience each time with the game when that kind of thing happens where you'll hear people say well oh this this level was easy for me or this is what happened for me or i wish the ai would do more in the meantime you you can get really lucky and see like a group of tanks fighting off uh, a wave full of infantry and actually manage to hold their own and stuff because that was always funny in the the base game was the seeing that happen yeah. And then people complaining that it never happened and that the AI was just cannon fodder and it's like, no, I've, I've witnessed this, it's it's really cool when it happens, it's just really rare. But, um, yeah, it's, you can't have the entire game always about the horror style setup, unfortunately, because then it would, it would kind of get boring in that sense. But I do like, I do like that setup and I think that's one thing that I would have liked more of with some of the DLC is just like engaging in some of these more cramped sort of like night missions because it doesn't make too much um, or it doesn't take too much advantage of the night missions but the base game is it's a horde shooter I've played stuff similar like Serious Sam Serious Sam is um, one of my more fun horde shooters to play just because of how ridiculous it is no different stories on mission variety. There, are, there is a lot of mission variety. It's just that I wish there was more night missions is the best way of putting it. The easiest way to describe it is like you have a horror game and you expect certain things out of it like certain amounts of night missions or darkness or something like that. It depends on how you want to portray horror. You know, like for instance, horror can be anything from, from like I said before, low ammo and your player running for their very life because they're going to die. Or it could be them getting scared by the atmosphere, which is why I like the heavy atmosphere of the, the dark levels. Because it really, it gets you more immersed. It, at least it gets me more immersed. I can be sat there in a level with it like totally pitch black and I'm just like, oh crap, where are the enemies going to come from? You know. Um, oh crap. And then like this, we've got them spawning in in random uh, pods, which is fun. But, um, yeah, the thing is... So why not have both low ammo and foes to run back away from? See, that's the thing. It's like, you do have that in some instances. The, the way that the, the horde is designed is to try and whittle you down as much as possible. To try and balance you out so that you get that experience more often than not. While also giving you a little bit of power fantasy. It's, it's always kind of trying to put you on the edge of just... Here's the power fancy, and then we'll take it away from you for a little bit and, and put you on the back foot. Um, but depending on your build, you can just power through stuff, and that's where the EDF style gameplay comes in, where like, you can see here, I because I had debug stuff on at the beginning um, from testing, just to allow me to do these levels in one go for this stream so I can show you guys. Um, I've been able to power through it pretty well compared to the average player. Um, which is crazy, but it, it's like the end game stuff is so powerful that it kind of tips the scales a little bit. It all depends on what you want out of this. Like, if you want a horror shooter, you can get that, but you'd have to like artificially debuff yourself by using different weapons and other things to what people are recommending because there's always... With this type of game, there's always the meta where it's like, okay, you use this and nothing else because it's that broken and stuff. Um, the thing is, the dev is really, really fantastic. I, I can't fault him for this because he listens really well to all the, the bugs That's and everything and, and tries to fix out as much as he can. Right 
but obviously the We're the problem with game development is um, the by fixing one thing you could end up breaking a million other things and that's essentially like the worst part about game development is that sometimes he can't fix things because there's that risk of breaking others so it's it's an interesting experiment in a horde shooter armored core style mech game there are interesting things that have been left out for design choice just because they didn't quite work on the cutting room floor. Like, for instance, Melee's been left out. But I still think it's a fun game. Uh, I do enjoy it. I like the, the world building and atmosphere, even if it does take heavy inspiration from said games like Armored Core and Move Love, especially. Like, if you wanted a better version of Move Love rather than the, the Move Love games that have been released, this is... This is basically right up your alley. Um, it's heavily inspired by Move Love. Um, which is great. It's just... With some of the levels, like these ones, I wish they weren't kind of like corridors mixed with large areas and then corridors again. I wish it was kind of a little bit more open or had like more routes, almost like a MOBA of sorts, you know, for certain things where you can have, like, different up routes, similar to, like, Monster Hunter style levels, you know, where they have different, uh, heights that you could go on to, uh, to move around. It'd be interesting having, like, optional other areas that you could go through to reach the end of the mission, you know, rather than plowing through the same area over and over and over again. But again, that might be for the sequel. Same thing with, like, melee and multiplayer and co-op. These are all things that are planned for the sequel, but can't quite be executed yet because of um, just because of how things are with the the game, you know. Um, it's like the focus on the DLC was just to bring those large scale battles to players to to see what they would think, and I I like it. Like the base game's fun, yeah, but the the DLC really does make things interesting. It tones up the difficulty. It gives you a lot of new. Uh, weapons it, um, it it just makes you feel especially on like the last level it makes you feel like that one guy that's just like alone in the middle of a field while this massive battle is going on around them which is absolutely crazy and I don't think I've seen another mech game do that but um oh crap but that comes at the cost of being mobbed by like the AI because of the way that it works quite a lot and then obviously the the potential risk of losing a lot of uh, a lot of work done depending on how far you are through in the level because the levels don't have checkpoints um it's literally just a case of if you die then you you have to start the entire level all over again which is is rough you need to buy me more time but it's it's something where i'm on it again it's like edf you you can grind for the the parts and stuff so it's not a total loss it, essentially i when i re originally reviewed the base game i was like everybody's gonna have a unique and different experience with this especially like different to me because like how i'm playing this now i make this look easy because of the, the debug thing that i did just so i could stream this but like you're gonna have people that will complain that they don't have certain weapons or you know, um, that they can't get them easily, and they'll get them eventually. It's just, it takes a little while to get them, and depending on what you get depends on, uh, your, you know, like, how your experience is. Because you could get, like, only shotguns because of it being random drops like EDF, or, um, you could get something really ridiculous and it will just make your playthrough a whole lot easier. And you could get really lucky and have that happen, like, almost immediately. So it's... It's unique in that, in that sense. You know, because I don't think there's anything else other than EDF that does that. You know, the, the one thing that I don't like is people constantly comparing it to Armored Core when it's... It, it takes inspiration from it. But it's not really Armored Core. It, it feels a lot more like Front Mission to me. It's like Front Mission mixed with uh, EDF, mixed with um, 
like serious Sam is the best way of putting it. That's how I, I look at it anyway, but I do I enjoy it. I wanna see where this goes. I I'm happy for the dev, because he he's a really hard worker. Like a really hard worker. I just I hope I hope this does well for him. I really do, because he's got a, a nice community behind him that gives him a lot of support as well. It's just I I always fear, especially when I'm working with other other devs, that they get in a little bit too much over their head, or rather they they have a little bit of success and then it goes to the head. So I'm like I'm hoping that that doesn't happen to him and he stays humbled and keeps creating good content, you know. USS Henson, this is Task Force Escalon. Because there's it would be terrible if uh if he just kind of fell down that whole route of I've made this thing, everybody thinks it's cool, so everything that I do is automatically awesome. You know, it's like you gotta keep yourself humbled with game development so you don't end up falling into easy traps where it's like you think you've done something that's amazing and instead it just gets disliked. You know. So this is this is kind of a, a wait and see kind of thing where it's like buy the game, support the dev because he's really great right now. You know, and uh, enjoy the experience that will be completely different to everybody else's. And I, I hope you enjoy the uh, the horror aspects and everything. You know, and, and what the game has to offer. I know a lot of people that are putting in, like, ridiculous hours on some of the gameplay as well. Like, the uh, the raid missions that you would just not expect. Like, some people have played a raid mission for, like, I, I think somebody said over, like, two to five hours or something just raiding to get uh, good gear and things. Um, that, that's another thing that was cool and I'm glad was implemented was uh, raids. Basically, it's just horde mode. Uh, from like any old game like Gears of War or something, but you gain uh, weapons that allow you to affect how you play the um, the campaign. You know, so for instance, if you can't find the campaign difficult, you can just go on a horde mode mission and hopefully you'll get lucky and it'll drop you a really good weapon and then you can just use that to push through. That's That's another thing that I like about this. Is this just war robots but PC? No. This is EDF mixed with front mission. And we're, we're killing aliens, customizing mechs, and uh, dropping bombs on everything. Now, for the last time, stay dead. Task Force Ascalon, this is the USS Henson. We're on station and ready to extract you. There you go. So we uh, we almost done with the DLC here. The last mission is absolutely nuts. I've never completed it. So uh, what I might do is just go all out goofy in terms of build for this that I know is going to be broken. Let's do weapons because I've got access to it. Might as well. So a lot of these other weapons and stuff like burst lasers that are really cool. But I'm thinking if I've got double of them, I'm going to go double Ragnarok here. Let's see. Yeah, I do. I have double Ragnarok. Okay, that's messed up. Okay, so... That's, have we still got the... Um, yeah, we've still got the paint. Oh, does photo mode actually work? I'm trying to... Half of me is trying to test this, and the other half of me is like, I'll oh, just play it, because, like, I don't want anything wrong with this. Um, from a tester's point of view, and because I've been so much of a part of the base game, I don't want to see this fail, but I also don't want to see bugs in it, and it's just like, I always get scared when I'm starting to see things, like... 
Let's see. Okay, the background works there. Oh, no. So I don't know whether that's just me or not, but the background's meant to change there and have, like, special particle effects on it. Instead, it doesn't. It had it in the base game. That's not looking too good right now. I'm going to have to see if anybody else has that or whether it's just my save file because sometimes your save file uh, from the previous build when you've been testing can cause problems so that might not happen to anyone in here. Let's see. Sentry turrets. Coaxial guns. Survivor pack. Interesting. Um... We got that, which is a giant missile turret, which I'll put on. We'll do the same with this one. Let's, let's see if... There we go. Coaxial missiles. So the, the cool thing that I like about this is... And one thing that I actually requested during development originally was the, the torso guns. I said it'd be pretty cool to get a reference to Armored Core in. And uh, that's been implemented a lot further in the DLC so instead of just coaxial guns on one torso that we had as a reference in the base game we now have coaxial missiles on torsos and a lot of other guns so that's that's fun so that was the evacuation from Elliot the the Suez Canal was the uh, the last mission and uh, this is where it all goes down what we have essentially is like the end game weapons on both shoulders here and then those rocket pods, and then we have all the other abilities, and this this mission is nuts. Um, we've got it set, so it should put the maximum amount of enemies on, but essentially this is like the D-Day mission from the base game, which was mission 15, but in reverse, and a lot bigger. The enemies are going to storm the beach here, and we have to defend it, this entire area, and they are just going to send absolutely everything they've got at us. Absolutely everything. There are multiple red carriers within the approaching swarm. If the reds break through, we won't be able to hold the region. We can't let them spread beyond the canal. I need you to intercept them at all costs. Can do, Command. We're on it. We have allied artillery positions shelling the advancing enemy forces. I highly What I want from like future stuff as well is more missions like this where it's like giant open fields so you can see all the enemies and everything engaging each other and it just being absolutely crazy. Because like as you can see we've already got a battle going on there between tanks and the uh, the mechs and tank line there. And then of course everything's slowly making the way up the beach now. I'm going to try and see if I can take that carrier out with just the missile pod rather than Ragnarok in it. If I have to, I'll use the Ragnarok, but I'd rather, I'd rather try and save it if possible. He says is it's taking forever with the, uh, the Zurong. That's not too bad. Okay. Problem with, with such a large area like this, the frame rate is dipping under 60 FPS on a 960. It's actually running at, let's see. So we're running at full settings on everything. And it's, it's running at 46 frames per second, which isn't too bad, but I know some people are going to be complaining about that. But then again, it depends on your rig. But then again, you can start seeing the slowdown here. This is because of all the effects and all the enemies, which are meant to be uh, highly optimized. I don't know whether that's been changed. But in the base game, you can have a lot of enemies on screen at, at range pretty decently. The idea is it's set up similar to uh, any other game where it has uh, level of detail models that are meant to uh, make sure that you can have as much on, on screen as possible. And... Uh, I don't know when those are popping in and becoming actual models rather than just 2D planes with um, animated cards on them. 
I'll actually have to ask the, uh, the dev at some point, did he uh, implement those for all the other models? It would be nice keeping the, uh, the frame rates high. Yeah, let's let's have a laugh. Let's call in some stuff. Ghost Rider AC one thirty bombing run. And then we'll do. Solid copy. But we'll we'll laze the um the walking hives at the moment here. I love this. Like I don't know about you guys, but just seeing all this this chaos and commotion go on is absolutely nuts. They're slowly progressing up the hill towards the tanks there. Ooh. Loads of explosions going off here. And then we've also got flying enemies as well that are coming in. Right, I'm going to try taking that one out there. I don't know whether that worked. Let's, let's find out. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Can I just laze that enemy? Does it have to be on it for a certain amount of time or what? Be a certain range, or it doesn't actually tell you, it just kind of either works or doesn't. It's kind of weird how that doesn't work. I don't know whether that's a bug or not. Does this game have multiplayer? No, it was not designed with multiplayer in, in mind, so it can't be bolted on, as it were. The, the entire game would have to be redesigned to uh, to get it to work. And it would mean heavy redesigning. Boom, 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 boom! There we go. Massive carpet bomb in the area, though. The idea is... Um, I like the detail of the carrier monster. It's... A lot of the uh, the monster details are really cool, but as you can see here, I'm I'm dipping to like low 40s in frame rate, which is crazy considering this PC isn't too bad. Oh, but again, it's that whole thing of your frame rate dips with the amount of things on screen. So, 350 was considered the maximum amount of enemies on screen to allow for this kind of like frame rate still. I was like, yeah, we, we can afford 40 being, like, the lower end. Maybe. I don't know. Let's try getting rid of some of these... ...enemies. Oh. We just... Solid copy. Air support incoming. Take out this carrier here because we're meant to kind of make sure that none of them get past. Oh, come on now. That moat where, as you can see, is just wave upon wave of monsters coming down and trying to wreck me here. Meanwhile, I know there was a flying one hovering overhead there, or at least it looked like it. I think it's over there somewhere. Yeah, there it is. I think this is a hit scan weapon? And it just... It, it shoots the effects for the sake of it? Interesting. This is literally just, we're going to throw everything at the player, but it's still really fun. This would be better with the uh, the music on for atmospherics and stuff. And just having a good time, but the problem is, if I remember rightly, some of the music was copyrighted last time I streamed, so it was like, yeah, nah. Oh, hey, babes. How you doing? Oop. Memes, just wondering. Is uh, TS on the swamp on Game Jolt? Miku says, first does a backflip and fails and breaks his spine. Jeez! The enemies have some impressive aggro range. 
fire on you from so far away. Yeah, it's, uh... It's interesting seeing him engage us from so far away and then us having to deal with it, you know. The thing is, normally, I like... When it comes to designing encounters for this type of game, or rather for this game in particular, I like giving the, the enemies more of an advantage by having more cover for them. So that you're not just, like, shooting them down from all the way away, but... Uh, I don't think... Outside of the, the warehouses and the boat here, I don't think there's too much cover for them. Essentially, it makes this entire area like an open killing field. Coordinates locked for bomb drop. Commencing air oh, I think I see how the bomb drop works now. That's that's strange. Can we just Ghost Rider and then bombing run? Oh wow, I'm hitting 30 fr 38 frames per second now? Just got back from watching the new Ghostbusters movie. It's a slight nod to the first one. Oh, nice! That's what I got out of that. <laughs> All the way turn around and we're just carpet bombing everything here. Now I'm back up to 50 frames per second. Oh god, uh, see what else I got here, oh, I'm trying to not get EMP'd or energy walled here, because that was another fun, uh, enemy was the, uh, the one that shoots energy projectiles that you have to avoid like that in a, uh, horizontal pattern, because it really makes you dodge out of the way normally, which players don't like doing too much because it zaps their energy. Uh, Meme says, I'm going to go to sleep. You have a, a great morning, good afternoon, or good night. Thank you very much, Memes. I guess I'll have to look for Team Swap uh, later on and see whether it's on Game Jolt. Woo, right. Oh, there's a... Instead of giving the monsters an advantage, it's more like giving them reasons not to die on sight. The thing is... It's like the player has a lot more advantage than the, the reds on this, primarily because of uh, the fact that the reds are so squishy. So it's like, the the way that their AI works, it works better when there's cover because then they start actually working together properly in groups. They'll naturally group up, uh, just ready to overwhelm the player. And it's, it's much more fun like that than it is uh, just watching them run at the player and die. <laughs> which, uh, Solid copy. which is always rough seeing the AI die so quickly, you know. Coordinates locked for bomb drop. Commencing airstrike. Oh, come on out. I just realized because I have uh, a turret... Well, a, a built-in set of coaxial missiles, and also uh, the shoulder ones. Technically, I'm not running out of ammo, even though I have no ammo. The question is, did we get... No, we didn't. Did he get past? No, he didn't. We just about got him. So they got, like, a total over overhaul, so it's proof. And the, the thing is, like, every every mission in the base game is designed to give the AI some cover so that they can actually work together. It's because it, the way the AI is coded, it will randomly group together like this now, and it will never be the same for every single player. So like for instance, where I'm getting a bunch of ranged enemies at the back and then melee like this, on somebody else's it might be totally different in the way that they're set up and being able to charge in and attack me. Um, it, it's more interesting in the base game because they have like mortar enemies and other things, but in this it's like at the moment because of the way that they're kind of flooding me at the end, that's why uh, we're getting all these like EMP shots and stuff. It's, it's crazy. They're all gathering up there for some weird reason though. Uh, oh, give me a moment. 
see if I can. Coordinates locked for bomb drop. Commencing airstrike. Just gonna, just gonna call in everything Solid here. Copy. Air support incoming. But yeah, it's like Ghost when we were designing stuff. Set to deliver fire support to your location. The AI having um, scenery to move around was key because it allows them to kind of get the drop on the player. The idea is if the player is taking cover behind scenery and stuff, that the uh, the AI can circle around it and make use of it to its uh, advantage so that it can get sneak attacks and then doesn't have to kind of walk directly at the player and die. Because <laughs> that's, that's not cool. Whereas being able to flank and take the player by surprise and make the player feel scared, that's... That's when it gets fun, you know. That's where you you have the balance between horror and action game, which I actually really like. But it's just encouraging that, knowing like the way the system works, and then encouraging it. That's that's the interesting part, you know. Like you see here, there's only a few warehouses and things. What I mean is like giant uh, rock mountains and other things that are placed on the open field that would be really cool. That would allow a lot more sort of enemies to uh, to take us by surprise or move up from the beach without just being in line of fire immediately. But saying that, you know, it's... This encounter is still... still fun. The best cover was Hall of Lead in the, basket, in the base game. <laughs> Oop. But yeah, most of the meta in this comes down to make a, uh, a mech that has infinite generator, uh, or almost infinite generator, and then just speed. Speed and kill everything. Dude, why are the frames so low? <laughs> it's so bad. The frame rate should not be under 40. Like, even with this many things on screen, most of these should be uh, 2D cards in the background. Or, like, sprites. Most of them. You can see them there. They look slightly different shading-wise. That's because they're meant to be 2D. <coughs> but I think the, uh, the range of that might have been altered. Because it looks like stuff is uh, 3D a little bit closer now. Oh, uh, sorry, I'll, yeah, a little bit closer than uh, what it was before. It was meant to be that it would only pop in at a certain range. That way we, you would save a lot on optimization, like most games. And uh, it's not, not looking like it at the moment, which is why I'm trying to kill as much as possible. So that my frame rate goes back up. Surprising your card should be able to handle it. That's what I mean, it's not optimized. It's not optimized like the base game. Why are you anime? Uh, why not? Oh. Do do do. Oh my god, I didn't realize there were so many carriers on this level. But yeah, the um, the DLC isn't as optimized as the base game, which is why it's having issues running this mission. But it's only the last mission that really suffers from these uh, dramatic dips. Because of just how much is on screen. Skip, if you don't like it, you feel free to leave, you know. You don't have to stick around, it's fine. I don't want to waste your time, after all. Everybody's time is precious. Thanks for being polite. Oh, it's no problem, you know. I like being polite. I just genuinely don't want to waste your time, is all. I'd, I'd feel even nastier for wasting your time, you know. 
I, I'm just sorry this content is, is not what you would like. I'm drunk and angry and want to fight. I hope you at least had fun drinking. Oh, getting torn up here. Doo -doo. Come on now. Trying not to uh, get ripped apart here while being he EMP. Why don't your legs move? Oh, on the mech. Uh, that's because I'm boosting. They actually do move. When I'm boosting, it just makes me go faster, but the mech isn't really animated like that. Yeah, the person that made it did that. Missile strikes had picked those laser units off before the battle. Those bastards must have hidden in the tunnels beneath the ground. Deploy smoke screens now. The Air Force can't suffer those kinds of losses oh. again. Echo team, this is command. Brits lose every war. <laughs> we will have to deal with the laser types across the canal. We're you can't win them all. Take them out, or any of them, apparently. <laughs> this isn't our first rodeo. We've done this before. I like the sound of that, Captain. Saddle up, boys. It's time to throw down! Be advised, Echo Team. Enemy carrier types are advancing toward your position. More Get carriers? At all costs. I didn't realize this, um... This went on for so long. Like, seriously, this level's over as welcome. Let's go use all these abilities here. Oop. Nope. I, I love the way I'm getting absolutely mobbed now by AI. Oh. oh wow, where did all these enemies come from? Oh. That moment where they just drop an absolute ton of enemies in the level right behind me and just go, have fun with that. Oh, cheers. I bet you have a beard. Shows your face. I'd rather not. Thank you very much. I like being anime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to debate that. The comment is really funny, though. I do like it. Oop, come on now. Can I just... Oh wow, this plane's falling out of the sky now? I didn't actually pay attention to that. Oh, come on. <laughs> I guess watching anime is illegal for me then, it's lucky. One thing, you can shoot a photo of your beard and add it onto your avatar name. I mean, I suppose I could. Or just make, um, just make a beard. I could probably edit the hair on it and it'd work. <laughs> Whee! I bet he has red hair too. I really don't. I don't. We do. 
I don't even know what that comment was meant to be either. <laughs> it's just funny. Meanwhile, it's just throwing enemy after enemy at me here, and I do not know why. It, it's like, oh, so we're in the end game now. We'll just throw everything at you, and uh, we've been doing it for like 23 minutes. Have fun with that. Is this Helldivers one? Um, I, I would like to play Helldivers one. Take down. That would be really cool, because I'm still enjoying uh, Helldivers 2. I just realised we let that guy go, though. Ah! Can I just... Uh, I need to figure out how to use this again. Let's try. Oh yeah, we we can't use that because of the air strikes. Oops. One of you want me on Star Wars Empire at War? If you win, I'll donate to any. I don't even think I have Empire at War. It's one of the few Star Wars games I don't think I own. That reminds me, I really wish they'd do a remaster of, uh, was it Dark Forces 2? Because there's Dark Forces that got released recently. It's like five bugs. Yeah, I don't have it. I'll have to get it at some point. It's like $15 profit if you win. <laughs> Good point. I love the way they're trying to raise the stakes here by telling me that there's another carrier that's going to come through or whatever and I haven't even been paying attention, I've just been shooting at enemies. Like this is the epitome of what I was saying before about mindless shooting. I'm assuming this is the final boss? Hold the line. Whatever it takes. Sir, enemy laser units oh. are destroyed. The air support is returning. Finally. I hope this is the final boss. Uh, I'm just gonna shoot just that with everything because this level is over since welcome. Oh, we destroyed that turret at least. Oh. on half health? Come on. Good job I've got Ragnarok, otherwise this would be an absolute nightmare. We got him. Supreme Commander. I've not played that in ages. We got it. It's down. Literally, I've not played Supreme Commander in ages. Target's down for the count. Scans show all carrier type enemies have been destroyed. I'm not sure you even have it on Steam. We actually did it. I told you we would. Please tell me that's the end. I've been on this mission for half an hour. Those walking coffins of yours might be worth the price after all, but you won't catch me in one of them anytime soon. He's not the only one impressed, Echo Seven. You did well back there. 
keeping them off my back, assisting with the hack. Somebody had to do it. Somebody, but not anybody. You proved your worth back there. I'll be in touch. He's gonna disappear just like that? Just like that. What's all we I love the way the the uh, talking gets cut off there when you just exit. So yeah, that's it. That's that's all the DLC. That's all the DLC levels in like two hours twenty. With uh, with some of the debug stuff. So that's and then there's the raid missions which you can do afterwards, which allow you to go back into each mission and get whatever you want and grind out stuff and mess around with uh, some of the other upgrades. Which is stuff like um, the flamethrowers, the um, vertical missiles, the laser cannons, frag missiles that lock on, uh, railgun and stuff. But yeah, apart from that, that's, that's pretty much all the DLC. All that it has to offer, plus, uh, plus the new parts and everything. So yeah, I don't know whether anybody's interested in that. If you are, then by all means, go show the dev some love. And uh, if not, then it's fine. You don't have to. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.